Hi friends, I'm Anna Hellman and I'm glad you're here today. Some of the most popular videos that I make are about mass producing cards and tips and tricks you can try to make several cards at one time quicker and easier, whether it's three cards at a time or 100 cards at a time, depending on what you're making them for. It's been a little while since I've made one of these videos. I am going to share with you today, we're going to make eight cards in a short amount of time. I have lots of tips and tricks to share with you for things to make your crafting experience a little more fun, a little easier. I hope you'll watch along. We are going to begin by cutting and scoring our card bases. I want to show the whole, the whole process here because as I create cards, there are a lot of things I do to save time. Now, this is my Stampin' Up! trimmer. One of the things I love about it is that it has a scoring blade. That's what I just did to this cardstock right here. It also has a cutting blade. So I am lining up at the four and a quarter marker. I have my paper vertically and I scored at four and a quarter. Now you can't see this, but I actually have two pieces of cardstock stacked on top of one another as I'm doing this and that score line will come through. Now I still have two on top of each other. I line it up at five and a half and I'm cutting these in half for my card bases. So I'm using four pieces of cardstock and we will end up with eight card bases. Now, when I cut through multiple pieces of cardstock, I make sure I go up and down with that cutting blade a couple of times and I make sure I pull on my loose ends over here to make sure I did cut all the way through before I move anything. That way, in case I need to cut one more time, I can go ahead and do that since I haven't moved any of my paper yet. So those will be our card bases. I used white thick cardstock for that. Now I'm gonna use some regular white for this. This will be one of my layers on my card and these will be mats for the front of the card. Now I often get questions about the lines on my trimmer. I created this to make it easy to cut card bases and mats. Uh, I am not going to use the specific lines on here this time because of the size I'm cutting. But if you're interested in details on that, please uh, use, there's gonna be some links in the video description below that you can take a look at. I'll have a link to the video where I explain about the lines on my trimmer and how that can really make it easier for you to do your cutting for your projects. Now, when I am cutting pieces, a lot of times I, I, I do it in a way that it saves a little bit of time. Now, my finished mat sizes for my cards will be four and one eighth by five and three eighths. What I just did, I cut off a quarter inch from the edge of my cardstock each direction. And now, uh, what that does is now all I have to do is cut it in half both ways and it will be the right size for my project. So lining up at four and one eighth here, and then we'll flip these sideways and we will cut at five and three eighths. Now, if you struggle with measurements for your card projects, I encourage you not to get too worked up about it. I've shared tips in the past, uh, different ways that you can different ways that you can still do these projects without worrying about the exact measurements. Actually, I think I need to leave this out for my next one. So I'll link to a video where I talked about uh, if you struggle with measuring some ideas for how to make it easier to get the size cut that you want. Now for this next one, we're cutting another layer. This will be the focal point of the card. They're going to measure two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Now here's a fun little uh, tidbit about my crafting. It is not unusual for me to have dimensions that are two and three quarters on one side or both sides. The reason is two and three quarters goes into an 11 inch piece of paper perfectly. So what I just did, I cut this cardstock into uh, five and a half inches wide by 11 inches long. Then I cut that in half. Now I have, these are two and three quarters inches by 11 inches long. And now I can cut these into two and three quarter inch pieces. And 
that came out of that 11 inches perfectly. Okay, so I have eight here. These others will be extra. Now I want a mat to go behind this to be a little bit bigger than this. So now these aren't going to come out quite as evenly from this cardstock because this will be just a little bit too long for my 11 inches, but these are going to measure two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Now, a lot of times, like I just showed on my last couple, I'll do that math and figure out, well, how big does this need to be? And then I, I cut wider and then I cut it in half to, to that size. For these with two and seven eighths, sometimes I will do that math, but that math is math. I don't really feel like doing right now. Uh, anybody out there, you, you, I would love, you do that math and share it with me. But for right now, uh, this I'm sure is how a lot of you do your cutting is just cut it to what you need uh, piece by piece instead of cutting it larger and then cutting it in half. So two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. I have eight of these now. This is Misty Moonlight cardstock. We are going to make some beautiful white and blue cards. And I believe we have our pieces cut. Now, what I want to do next is to do our embossing. I'm using a beautiful new embossing folder. Uh, it's called, I think, Delightful Doily, something doily, okay. Gorgeous, I made some cards with this the other day. I absolutely loved how they turned out. So I am going to take my matte pieces and run them through my cut and emboss machine. Now, when I am trying to make several cards at a time. A lot of times I will emboss two pieces at a time. I will, cu couple of things I'll mention with this. Uh, one, you do not get quite as nice of an emboss. Uh, it is just a little bit less, less uh, detail doesn't really seem like the word, but it doesn't press into that, the shape of that embossing quite as well. Uh, but let's look at these. Okay, we still get that beautiful doily pattern here. And let's flip these over. And a lot of times you can tell which side was against the folder because that side still has a really nice emboss, but the other side is a little bit less detailed. Like I can tell that was the back side that touched the other paper and not the folder, if that makes any sense at all. Now putting a couple of pieces through your embossing folder can be a little bit harder to crank, but as long as you're not using thick cardstock, at least in my experience, what I found is that it doesn't really cause much of a change as far as how, how hard it is to crank. So we will do these. A tip that I am not using today, but I've shared in some other videos with embossing is a great way to have some embossing on your project, but to save time in doing it is to emboss your pieces, emboss a piece as large as your embossing folder. And when I'm doing this, I really like to use some of my larger embossing folders, my six by six ones. So emboss a full piece of cardstock or two full pieces of cardstock uh, at one time, and then cut those down into smaller pieces. So you could take, I've taken a six by six piece of cardstock before and actually cut those into one by six strips or one by five and a half inch strips, since that would be the size that would fit on a card. And then you get a nice piece of embossing on each card, but you definitely save quite a bit of time with how, with, with all of that embossing and how many times you're sending it through your machine. Okay, we have our eight pieces, our eight card mats embossed. And I think it is time to move on to some stamping. So I have this really fun new stamp set that I am seeing tons of potential with. I think I'll be able to make some really beautiful cards with this set. And for this project today, we are going to focus on this lovely, I don't know if we should call it a medallion or a floral, whatever we want to call this. And I will be stamping onto these square pieces that I prepared. 
When I'm doing multiples, a lot of times I try to clear a lot of space on my work surface, which can be seriously difficult if you know what I'm saying. Uh, it's really easy to get everything covered with things, right, when we're crafting. But it's really nice when you're making multiples to clear a lot of space and be able to spread things out. The more times you can keep doing the same task instead of switching between like stamp and then grab a piece of paper, stamp and then grab a piece of paper. If you can just lay all these out, stamp, 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 that can really save some time. So I have my eight pieces of cardstock. I have two colors of ink. I have Misty Moonlight is what I will be starting with. And actually I want to angle these. I think this will help me to stamp them. This is the way I want them to be on my cards. So I think it will make it easier for me to stamp them to look nice if I lay them that way now. So we'll stamp each one of these with the Misty Moonlight. Next, we are going back and doing something kind of fun. This is a special stamp set that is, it's called, it's one of our reversibles stamp sets. So what that means is it is designed to be able to flip that stamp over. I'll clean this off real quick with my chamois. I absolutely love my stamp and chamois. This is how I clean my stamps most of the time. I love that I don't have to touch it. I can just press my stamp into it. Doesn't get my hands dirty. And now I'm ready to do the reversing. So I'm going to lift the stamp off of my block and put it with the flat side up. This is the side we typically would not stamp with, but these reversibles are designed to use them this way as well. Now I'm going to ink up the back side. You can see that full stamp is covered in ink. And now I can fill in what I have already stamped with this boho blue ink. And it looks a little bit dark right now, but it will lighten up as it sits. So we'll go ahead and we'll stamp the rest of these. Now, if you worry or feel like you don't do a great job at two-step stamps where you're filling in the original one, I want you, I'm telling you, normally I wouldn't, Normally I would not tell you to look super close at my projects because they're usually not perfect. But uh, right now I'm telling you, you should look closely because if you do, you're going to see these aren't perfect. And perfection is something we should not strive for in card making. It's, it's handmade and nothing handmade is perfect. And that's part of what makes it special. So these won't be perfect and I'm totally okay with that. No one is going to look at the projects that you, the cards and the special things you give them and evaluate them per, for perfection. They will just appreciate the thought and the effort that went into it. So we have these stamped. These will be matted with those blue pieces we cut. We have one more piece to prepare and we will be stamping our greeting tags. I'm using a congratulations stamp. I thought these would be beautiful wedding cards and I've been a little bit low on wedding cards in my stash. So this is a great way to restock them. This is a beautiful set. I really like this nice long cursive congratulations. And what I'm bringing in here are some white strips. These are my paper scraps from when I create my card bases and my card mats or my card mats, I'm sorry for my cards that often measure four inches by five and a quarter inches. For the ones I created for today, I created them just a tiny bit larger because I love the look of just a tiny border around the edge of the mat from the card base showing. And I don't know if that completely made sense, but normally when I cut my card bases, they measure my card mats, I keep saying the wrong word, they measure four by five and a quarter. And what I end up with left over are these pieces that are about half an inch wide. <laughs> I say about half an inch because, you know, 
my cutting is not perfect and I didn't get that one stamped perfectly. If I want to, I can flip this piece over and stamp that again. I often do that. Or since these are scraps, I just don't really have to worry about it too much if I don't want to. But this right here is something I do a lot. I use these strips. If you look at cards on my website or in my videos, you often see that I have little strips like this as my greeting tags. They're quick, they're easy, they use up my paper scraps, and I think they look very nice on projects. So this is what I do. I just stamp on the strips and then I cut them apart by hand. If you feel like you wouldn't be able to cut straight by hand, I just encourage you to look at it for a second, line it up, and then just go. After you start to cut, don't think about it, just go. And mine are not always perfect again, but for anyone who's not looking at my cards with a fine tooth, going over them with a fine tooth comb, I think they are, they're perfect in my mind. Okay, let's go with that. Okay, so here we have our tags. We will be, assembling them, I think, right now. So let's go ahead and get those card bases out. And I wanna share with you a tip that I just learned from a friend here recently, and it is so amazing in my opinion. So I did score these, as you saw. Uh, you saw that I did two pieces thick at once. Here's the piece that was on top that has a little bit more noticeable score line. Here is the piece that was on the bottom that has a little bit less noticeable score line, but it is still there and easy to score on. So as you notice, I'm folding these very loosely. These are definitely not ready to be decorated or sent to loved ones. But what I am doing is just getting a really loose fold and now I want to stack these on top of each other. I send a lot of cards at times. Uh, I send thank you cards every month to anyone who has ordered from me for that month. And so there are times a lot of cards are being made and sent from my house, from my craft area. And this tip right here, oh my gosh, this is like life changing, look at that. I scored those in no time and they lay really nice and flat. So that's a really great tip if you are making multiples. Okay, we have these ready. Now let's get these doily pieces back out. And I'm looking at this wondering which side I want to be up. And honestly, I, I think I'm going to put my adhesive on the side where the where the detail is just a little bit less noticeable. And actually some of these, I can't even tell which side is better and which side isn't, which is, which is good. Uh, but okay, we'll just go with it. It doesn't matter. So when you are putting your embossing pieces on certain folders, you, you may want your embossing to look a certain way, but keep in mind, they can go either direction. So with these, some of them are going to be the emboss side, some of them will show the deboss side, but I like to lay my pieces out as you can see, put all the adhesive on at once, and then I'll grab my card bases and start putting these onto those card bases one at a time. I debated what colors to use on this project. I thought about using some of the misty moonlight card bases, that beautiful blue that I cut the matted, the matte pieces out of. And then I decided I just love clean and simple cards that have a lot of white space on them. And so that's what I decided to go with for these. Okay, so to keep everything in view so that you can see what's happening right here, I can't, I'm not laying everything out. But if I was not recording right now, I would lay all my card bases out. And then as I grab the mats and put them on, I wouldn't have to move 
any of those card bases and I could just keep going. So we'll do a few here and get these put on. You should tell me in the comments, I'd love to know, do you create many cards that have a lot of white space? Do you like the clean and simple look? Do you usually go with colors? I know I usually go with colors. A lot of times my cards will have a white card base and sometimes they have quite a bit of white space, but normally I add a lot of color. And when I remind myself to go basic and leave it neutral, I usually really like how the results come out. Okay, let's scoot these aside for a second. Let's prepare this piece that will be the focal point on top. So we have our stamped pieces. We have our Misty Moonlight bases or mats, the mats that go underneath. So I'll lay these out and get them ready. Then we'll flip these over backwards. We'll get adhesive on them. And I sometimes I debate which pieces on my projects I want to pop up. So on these, I decided I am just going to attach these straight to the car or straight to the base. And then we'll decide if we want to actually pop up the whole piece or not. So a lot of times I use tape but sometimes I find, especially when I'm doing multiples like this, that glue can actually be a little bit quicker to apply. And another thing that is really nice about glue is when you have a small border like this around your piece, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So if you don't get it down in quite the right spot, you have several seconds, plenty of time to be able to shift it a little bit and get that in the right spot where you want it. So we will get these matted. I'm really excited to see these come together. Glad you're still here watching. The end is always the most exciting when we see the final results of everything we've done. I will link, I'll mention this right now, if you appreciate these videos that talk about steps to produce multiple cards at once. I don't always like to use the word mass producing because it's not a factory. We're still making beautiful handmade things. But uh, if you like these, I will link to some more of them in the video description below. Some of my past ones and I shared different tips, different ideas in all of them. Now here is my take your pick tool. I love this thing. I use it, my favorite way to use it is to use the sticky end down here to pick up my gems, my pearls, rhinestones, anything like that to put on my projects because my fingers don't really do a great job of that. Uh, and this tool does a much better job of that. Uh, I used to use I used to use my scissors more for that, but I do like to use the take your pick tool a little bit better in most cases. Okay, so I'm using the piercing tip to apply the dimensionals to, to the backs here. Now, I a tip that I like to share, but I don't always remember to do myself is when you stick it down. If I'm careful as I lift up, I can actually remove that paper backing all at one time. So I can stick it down, remove that paper backing. And as you can see, I can do this several times and the paper pieces just build up as I go. And at some point I'll take those off of there because they get a little bit cumbersome and I can't really see what's happening underneath them. So if you, this is a great tip, if you have arthritis or uh, trouble with your hands at all, this is a fantastic tip for making some of the little detail work a little bit easier for you. So we'll get all of these dimensionals on here. And pretty soon here, we get to see the results of everything that we've created. 
I will mention, since I have a little bit of time here, something that I don't really talk about very, very often, and then sometimes I get questions from some of you, but I get questions sometimes about how can you get the best deal on your supplies uh, to stamp it up, offer discounts or free shipping, or you know how, how can you make the most of the money that you're spending on your craft supplies, which I totally understand, friends. Uh, that's why I ended up doing what I'm doing because I actually started with a different company before Stampin' Up! Uh, and then I switched at a particular point. But the reason I got into this whole crafty business is because I loved to use the products and I wanted a discount. So, um, yeah, so the... <laughs> One of the ways to get a discount, uh, we have different promotions various times. We have free shipping days occasionally. We have different ways to save uh, just with sales and things. But honestly, the best way to get a long-term discount is to sign up and get the starter kit. And technically what that means is becoming a demonstrator. But I try to encourage people not to, not, not to freak out when you hear those words because... Uh, a very large number of demonstrators just do it to order their own supplies. So I have a growing team, an amazing growing team. I, the, my, my team members get to spend a little bit more personal time with me. We do monthly craft get togethers on Zoom and fun things in our Facebook group. And I'm always available to help and answer questions. And that's a really, really great way to get a discount on your supplies. And then if you absolutely love this card making thing, if it makes your life better, I encourage you to think about whose life you could make better by introducing them to card making. Um, there is absolutely, and, and this is for anyone, not just people who are considering signing up, but uh, there are so many people we can help with this hobby. One, by just giving them a great pastime that makes them feel good. But second, uh, by sharing our handmade creations with them. And you can do that if you, if you want to, whether you become a Stampin' Up! demonstrator or a rep for another company, or you just craft and have fun and want to share it with people, uh, I encourage you to think about that a little bit. So anyway, uh, I get distracted a lot. This is why I don't tell stories and things while I'm crafting. We just stick to the basics, right? I, it's hard for me to tell stories and focus on projects at the same time. So anyway, uh, my team is a really great really great group of people. We have a lot of fun doing different things. We're spread out all over the country and it's really neat to get to know people. And we're from all walks of life, all kinds of interesting professions and backgrounds. And we, <laughs> we have somebody on our team who is trained in explosive, like using explosives. Like it makes sense when you know the story, but when she first told me, I was like, what? Like, I, I, that's crazy. I can't even imagine. So it's really fun. And yeah, if you have questions, let me know. The discount starts at 20% and a lot of people pretty easily bump up to getting 25% off of all of their supplies. So anyway, that's a great, since I'm just removing the paper backing pieces here, I'll mention a couple of other things we do stamping challenges in our facebook group we do try to get together anybody who wants to uh, once a year for a team retreat that is the absolute best when we get to hang out together in person and craft and that's the best if you don't spend time together in person with crafters it's just like it's like we all have the same spirit and we're just automatic friends it seems like usually when I meet new crafters that I haven't met before okay let's get these greeting tags put on these cards and just one last step how many times when you're crafting are you like where did that go where did that thing go and then eventually you figure out oh it's stuck to my sleeve yep that's what just happened 
put this nice tag down here and we can start to see how these are coming together. I do want to add a couple of little embellishments or technically I don't know how many. Sometimes I, I just have to see how they come together, you know? And again, if the camera wasn't running right here, I'd have all these laid out. I would not be shuffling them around as I'm doing this. I would do this. They'd be laying here, stick it on, move to the next one, stick it on, move to the next one, stick it on. So let's bring a few back in. I don't know if you can see all of them but you can see parts of all of them. And I was debating which embellishments I wanted to use, whether I wanted the little, I love these little brass butterflies, or whether I wanted to stick with some basic sequins. And often what I find, so sometimes, sometimes what I find is I just can't really decide until I lift one off of the sheet and look at it on the project. So I am, going to put one of these nice brass butterflies in the center of each flower. And this will wrap up our project. So I hope you learned something here. I really appreciate you watching along. If you're new, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. I do share more videos of this type every couple of months probably, sometimes more often than that. But let me know in the comments what you learned here or what questions you have or if there's something you would love a way to maybe save time on or make a little bit easier. Uh, what questions could I help you answer? What can I share in a future tutorial to help you in your crafting? So links will be in the video description below for several different tutorials I mentioned and the products I used if you're interested in adding them to your collection. I truly appreciate those of you who shop with me. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.